Hi, this is Nell. And this is unlike the other pest videos that I, I've done because I really don't have any of the pests to show you. Um, these two are the ones that I've encountered the least in my horticultural career. You will see a couple pictures in the blog post, but I'm going to describe them very well. So today what I'm going to talk about are fungus gnats and root or soil mealybugs. Some people call them root mealybugs, some call them soil mealybugs. And how to identify them and how to control them. And this was part of that series that I did about four, four months ago. So I'm a little late on posting this one, but better late than never. So unlike the aphids and the mealybugs, the spider mites and the thrips, the scale and the, what am I forgetting? Scale and white flies, they all hatch on the foliage, the leaves, the stems, whereas these two are in the soil. They hang out, the root mealybugs hang out in the soil and the fungus gnats hatch out of the soil. Now I'm going to start with fungus gnats just because I have more experience with them and because I have more to say about them. <laughs> And also, too, because you can actually see them. You can see the adults flying around. And I'm not going to go into the life cycle too much because that's getting technical. I just want you to be able to say, okay, that's, that, this is fungus gnats, and here's what I'm going to do about it. Now, fungus gnats can be found outdoors, too. They can be found around drains areas with poor drainage where it stays really wet but um, I've dealt with them more as house plants so that's what I'm going to be addressing a little bit more and what they love is they love to feast on um, the rich organic matter in soil whether it's um, compost, peat moss, leaf decay, uh, they like, as I said, moist areas, and they like areas with um, a fair amount of humidity. And what the adult fungus gnats are is they are tiny, tiny flies. They fly around. Um, they are barely a quarter of an inch long. Most of them are smaller than that. They're tiny. You might... Um, confuse them with fruit flies because some people do. Fungus gnats are actually smaller than fruit flies and they are sort of anywhere from a blackish to a grayish color. And they don't stray too far away from the plant that they hatch out of. They aren't really um, robust flyers. So unlike, you know, mosquitoes that, that are just flying all over the place and flies, they tend to stick right around where they came from, <laughs> if that makes sense. The adult fungus gnat has a very short lifespan. I think it's just a few days. And they fly around and they don't do any harm to the plant once they're hatched. It's all down below the larvae once the eggs hatch and they become the, the you know, the larvae they can um, do some damage to the roots of a young plant. Very rarely will they damage an established plant, but they're just more of a nuisance than anything else. And if you have a lot of house plants, it can become a problem because they're, you know, they will multiply. There are so many of them. So that's why you want to catch them as soon as you see them flying around. And I started out my horticultural career as um, an interior scaper, a uh, landscape interior, interior plant technician, somebody who takes care of plants and offices and all that. And so you would be called to unaccount to go deal with fungus gnats just because you happen to be close to it to do a drench. 
and I remember this one account, it was a bamboo palm and it was in a bank and it was infested and you know they're all just flying around there and they're flying up my nose and if I went to open my mouth they'd go in my mouth because remember I said they're attracted to moist areas so your nasal <laughs> passages um, are are moist and your mouth of course is and inside your ears so they're just they're just a pain to have around and there seem to be like a million of them <laughs> but uh, there is a control for them coming up next now be before we get into that briefly I'm going to answer the question where do they come from it's like I'm not quite sure they could come in on a plant that you brought in who knows where they come from but uh, what is one of the major causes of them is overwatering. So go easy on the liquid love. If you keep your plants really wet, they are going to be prone to having fungus gnats hatch out of the soil. So easy, easy, ease up on the overwatering, especially if you're in a fairly humid climate. Okay, so we're going to pretend that my darling little peperomia on the table has fungus gnats. So first of all, what you want to let it do is dry out by at least a half. Um, you don't want it to be thoroughly, thoroughly soaking wet when you're drenching it. And if, if possible, take it out of the grow pot and remove all, all the moss from around it. If it has moss that is um, disguising the, the, the grow pot inside the decorative pot. And then you're going to work up a drench. And the drench is hydrogen peroxide. And you want the pure hydrogen peroxide. You know, sometimes they add things to it, so make sure it's the pure stuff. And you want one part hydrogen peroxide to about four to five parts of water. And you want to mix that really well and then you want to water the plant. You, you want to water it all the way around um, like this, not just right here. You want to make sure you water all, all the surfaces of the soil so it goes right down in and thoroughly coats all the all the soil or it just drenches all the soil all the way to the bottom and you'll see it fizz and that is what you want because hydrogen peroxide does that fizzing and it kills most of them on contact. Now you want to repeat that in two weeks. Repeat that same drenching process and if you're still seeing fungus gnats flying around you want to repeat it in two weeks after that. If it's a small pot like this pot, you can do it every seven to 10 days for a bigger pot every two weeks should be just fine. Oh, and by the way, if the adult fungus gnats are really um, driving you crazy, you can get the yellow sticky traps and put them up because they will be attracted to that and they'll stick to that. I will leave a link to them in the blog post for you and if you can't tell exactly what plant it's coming out of you're probably going to have to drench all your plants but as I said they stick pretty close to the plant that they hatch out of so um, hopefully you can tell there but as a preventative me measure you want to might want to do all the uh, plants in proximity to the one that you think is infested Okay, so that method I've had experience with. Other things that I've heard that work are um, mosquito dunks in granule, granule, granular, that's hard to say, granular form, just uh, sprinkled on the, on the top of the soil and watered in. I've heard that. Uh, there's a special type of Bt. Bt is a, is a bacteria which kills caterpillars and that's exactly what, that, what the larvae are. Um, but it's a special kind, um, I forget what it's called. It's not the regular BT, but that's a drench. Um, 
I read neem oil, but there's real mixed reviews about that. A neem oil a drench. And the last one um, would be nematodes. And nematodes are live beneficial insects. And you just uh, sprinkle them around and then they go into the soil and they eat and they do their thing. So it, it just depends on how you feel about having that in your house or not. But those are some alternatives. And um, again, there will be that information in the blog post. Now we are going to move on to root mealybug or mealybugs. Now root mealybug is harder to, um, to identify early on because it's in the, the roots. And you might see a little bit of it around the surface, but the majority of them are down on the roots because that's what they feed on. And they aren't exactly the same as the mealy bugs that hang out up here, but um, they look very similar. They look like the specks of white cotton or a white fungus on the roots. And if you're not sure if it's a fungus or root mealy bug, what you can do is you can take a magnifying glass if you can't tell with your bare eye, take a magnifying glass and look and see. And if they are slowly moving or they've got legs, then they are, are root mealybugs and not a fungus. Okay, so root mealybugs, as I said, are, you know, oftentimes you don't know about them until the damage is well on the way. And the uh, new foliage can look stunted. The leaves can be yellow. They can be brown the plant can just look uh, it you know it's sort of hard to tell because it's like a lot of other symptoms that plants have when they're either infested with something or they have a disease so that's why this one is hard now with outdoor plants if you bring an outdoor plant home and you're going to plant it you're going to take it out of the pot and see it before before um you planted in either the ground or a container whereas a house plant we usually just bring our house plants home our beautiful house plants and we go plop, plop, plunk in this spot we want them but one of the things that you can do is if you bring a new plant in the house is to take it out of the pot hopefully this will come out of the pot you know without falling totally apart and you can look and see now that is perlite it's not yeah, it's not, you know, a root mealy bug, but that's um, a way to to look for them because they are um, greenhouses and growers are notorious for having, I, I won't say notorious, but it just um, can be an issue in uh, with growers and with greenhouses, a root mealy bug. So be sure and check your plants when you bring them home. And if they are bad, take them back. And get them out of the house. Okay, so these these critters that lurk in the soil and they suck the sap out of the plants, as I said, can be a problem. And uh, we had a greenhouse off of our dining room growing up back in New England in Connecticut. And we had scented geraniums. We had geraniums and streptocarpus, a whole bunch of other plants. But those three were the ones that would have root mealybug, um, not on a, on a regular basis, but every now and then. And they are pro prone to it as, um, as are succulents. And also the other one I know that is prone to root mealybug would be the African violet. And so I'm going to tell you what my dad would do for root mealybug. And this was a while ago and it seemed to work as far as I can remember. So um, this is what he did. So what he would do is he would take the plant out of the pot because these were all in our greenhouse. So they would overwinter in the greenhouse and then they normally go outdoors somewhere in the summertime. And so he would take it out of the pot. He would knock all the infested soil off as much of the soil as you can get off as possible uh, put it in a garbage bag and 
put it in the garbage. You don't want to put it in the compost because you don't want to spread it. You want to get rid of it as, um, as quickly as you can. And then he would fill a tub. We had these horse tubs because we had horses and cows. But anyway, we would, uh, he would fill those with hot water. And now what he said is it was not scalding, but it was not warm. It was hot. So I did a little research to see if anybody else did this method too. And what I read was anywhere in between 110 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees Fahrenheit is good. So you dip the plant in up to about here, up to where it about the soil line is, even though most of the soil is gone, or where the soil line would have been. And you leave it in that water for about 10 minutes. And what it does is it kills the root mealybug, but it doesn't kill the roots of the plant. Now, if it's not hot enough, it's not gonna do anything. And if it's too hot, it is going to injure the roots of the plant. The next thing he would do is he would wipe the pots or he would um, also submerge the pots in hot water. He would usually have a separate thing for the pots, a separate pail or a tub, and that would be boiling hot, hot water. And he would just you know, submerge the pots in there in case any of the root mealybug was hanging out on the sides of the pot. Uh, you want to make sure to get that off too before you replant it. And he would replant it in fresh soil and it was, I believe it was about, I know that he used diatomaceous earth and potting soil and it was approximately, I did research this too, and it's approximately, I think it's a tablespoon of diatomaceous earth to a quart of soil. Um, I will have the exact measurements in the blog because I'm like, I think it was a tablespoon to a quart and you would thoroughly mix that through and then you would plant the plant uh, in, that, in that soil, in that soil with the diatomaceous earth and the diatomaceous earth w would uh, get any of the root mealy bug that perhaps did not come off or if there was or I think it actually prevented any more from showing up too. Yes, I just, I just checked and it is a tablespoon of diatomaceous earth to a quart of potting soil, of nice fresh potting soil, clean potting soil. Um, so that's what you, that is what you wanna use. So I'm not sure if there's any uh, pesticides that work as a drench, that's not my thing. Um, if you have anything to share that you have used eff effectively for either fungus gnats or root mealybugs, please let us know. These are the two um, methods of control that I know. As I said, these are the two pests that I have the least experience with, but I just wanted to share what I know with you. Of fungus gnats, I do have more experience with. That was from um, working as a plant technician I tend to keep my plants on the dry side so I've never had fungus gnats in my house at all and in terms of root mealybug I haven't had that either I just remember it in our greenhouse and my dad took care of that but I just wanted you to um, hear about what he did for it so as usual there will be more information in the blog post that goes along with this because I know that I've forgotten to say something. <laughs> but I hope you have found this video to be helpful. I thank you for all your subscribes. I really appreciate them. I have a lot more videos coming your way, so stay tuned for those. And now let's get out in the garden. I'm looking at my pomegranates and my ponytail palm, and my crested euphorbia, and on and on and on, and make our worlds a more beautiful place. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.